Justice and Christina and uh, and Miss Donna, welcome in the name of Jesus. Um, we're going to uh, discuss and talk about uh, continuing uh, the series, a life-giving ministry, uh, because without the life of Jesus, we have nothing to give uh, to other individuals. And I don't know about you, but there are people that uh, contact us all the time uh, that need prayer, that need reassurance, that need encouragement, uh, and need healing in their bodies. And, and so this is, uh, we, we need to have that life in us uh, to give uh, to other individuals. That's part of leadership. Uh, what you have, what you have received freely, we have received and freely we give. Uh, and Monica, it's great to see you. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you hear, uh, can you hear us? Can everyone hear us? Okay. Oh, Anna Monica is connecting. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jesus. But tonight we want to talk about kingdom culture. And, uh, you know, that, that word kingdom is, is thrown around and is used a lot uh, with different ministries. Uh, but we want to talk about what does that involve and what does it include and what does it mean to you and your life? Uh, kingdom culture. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred tonight. And Sherry said the title of the message tonight is Kingdom Culture. You know, Jesus said that we are in the world, but not of the world. And, and the problem for a lot of people is that we have lived in the world, we've been of the world, and then we come to Jesus uh, and we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And that should uh, give us uh, a new perspective uh, on life and uh, because once we're born again we can see the kingdom of God we can enter the kingdom of God but a lot of people want to continue operating in the old way mm -hmm. according to the worldly standards and, and that's just an invitation for trouble uh, for mm -hmm. Christians once they've come to Jesus they accept him as Lord and Savior and then try to live in the world as the world lives because we're yes we're in the world we walk uh through the world but we are of heaven we're oh, not of yeah. this world and so those that's really important and this is an important message tonight and if you have a, a pen and paper i wish you'd get it out because i'm going to just give you some uh nuggets uh, that that are going to be important uh and sherry and i have taught and, and uh, thought a lot about this message tonight and and we want it to impact your life not just to give you information but to actually impact your life so that you're not the same um it's an important message and the first uh, nugget that i want to give you is that the environment for the new creation is the kingdom mm -hmm. so we're in the world but we're not of the world we are in the kingdom and we need to learn how to function and operate in the kingdom of god you know god uh, in creation uh, he always created the environment before he created the creature uh, mm, he hallelujah cre he created the seas he brought forth the seas uh, before he brought forth fish he brought forth the land and the sky before he brought forth the animals and the birds so mm, he mm. created an environment in which the create the creature could live and thrive Ooh, and multiply. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. it's the same thing for us. When Jesus came uh, on earth and he began to minister on the earth, he announced the arrival of God's kingdom. He said, uh, the kingdom is at hand, repent. Yeah, so repent. you gotta change, repent means you change your way of thinking. Uh, in uh, Matthew, uh, he talks about changing the way you think because the kingdom is here. He said in uh, Matthew 12, 28, that if I have cast out a demon, uh, if I've cast out devils and he just cast out devils, 
uh, in this uh, narrative. And he said, if I have cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom is here. Yeah, well, that's exactly what he had done. He had cast out devils, so the kingdom is here. So the kingdom, he brought forth the kingdom. He explained the kingdom. You look at what he taught, he taught more about the kingdom than anything else. He was preparing a kingdom for us, mm. for the new creature. <laughs> Hallelujah, the new creation. In uh, uh, John, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, uh, if you are in Christ, you're a new uh, creation. creation. Old things, all things are, are passed, passed away. away. Behold, all things are new. So the new things have come. And so that it's here. It's not something we're going to have to wait and look for. We're, we are a new creation, and God has a new environment for us. Oh, a new a, environment. A new oh, environment yeah. where we can thrive. But we've got to renew our mind uh, and think like uh, God is thinking here because he has created this environment. It's the kingdom of God. It's not something we see. You can't uh, touch it uh, with your hand. Uh, but he said, it comes and it's in you and it's around you. And, and we're going to talk about this kingdom and this kingdom culture. So we begin to think in terms of kingdom get up in the morning, think in terms of kingdom. How do we function in the kingdom? That's what this message is about, functioning in the kingdom. Because Jesus said, repent, you've got to change the way you're thinking because the kingdom is here now that's pretty exciting so what, so what is the kingdom well it's righteousness peace and joy um, romans 14 17 it's righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit mm -hmm. so the kingdom is the supernatural realm of the holy spirit where uh, the impossible things become amen. possible amen glory to god by faith Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what the kingdom is. It's the supernatural realm of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. where impossible things become possible. And we can live in that realm of the Holy Spirit and, and in the kingdom and see uh, supernatural things happen. That's impossible right. things uh, ought to be uh, normal for the new creation. Uh, that's what it is. So the, the, the first point is in understanding the kingdom is that the environment God has created for us is the kingdom and we cannot continue to operate in the world uh, according to worldly standards or we're just inviting trouble for ourselves so the kingdom is very important now the second point I want to make and this is another important point number two in the kingdom pursue holiness in everything. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that causes me to look at this point is that people try to distinguish, put a line between what is sacred and what is uh, secular. Uh, and so once they get a line and they draw a line and say, this is sacred and this is secular, then they, they're messed up. And it's going to cause them to go down a path that there's mm -hmm a rocky path that there's a lot of problems. And so I want to uh, reveal this, to explain this concept to you, because I've seen it in the lives of so many people around the world. They're trying to distinguish what is sacred and versus what is uh, secular. Now, let's think about what sacred is. Well, religion wants to say that such things uh, as church services and Bible studies and uh, worship, those are in the realm of the secular things, no, the, uh, the, the sacred, sacred. Uh, the sacred mm -hmm. things. That's the realm of the sacred things. But when we look at what is sacred, uh, people are, are they're drawn back to the Old Testament, where in the Old Testament, there were some things that were holy, uh, and some things that were common. And, and so you could take some instruments and, and, and sanctify those and they would become holy instruments in the temple for the service of God. And, and, and some things are not, were not holy. And so they want to distinguish 
what is holy versus what is secular. Uh, but in the New Testament, things are different. And this is really important for us to understand that it's you who are made holy. How are you made holy? Well, you're made holy by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Amen. a, 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 that's a, Hebrews 13, 12. You're made holy, holy by, the, by the Spirit, Spirit of, of God. God. Hallelujah. That's a, a second Thessalonians, uh, second, I mean, second Thessalonians 2, 13. Okay, so those are the two, the, the two were sanctified, were made holy by the Spirit of God, were made holy by the blood of Jesus. So you're made holy. You accept Jesus, you activate that blood in your life, then, then you've been made holy. And uh, for 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says it's the very God of peace, sanctify you, holy. make you holy in your spirit it's and your soul, soul and your body, body, every aspect, make you holy. Okay, but there are some in, in other interesting scriptures that says we are to be holy mm -hmm. as God is holy. Now, what is holiness anyway well uh god is the one who's holy he said that, that he's holy mm -hmm. and he tells us to be holy and, and holy to understand holy uh, holiness you have to think about all of the nature of god because then if we can understand the nature of god if we can think about the nature of god that he is faithful he is love uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Then, then we think about the whole, all the nature of God, and then that helps us understand what holiness is. And now we're to be holy, and only if we are holy can we even see God. You have to be holy. And you, a lot mm -hmm. of people won't mm -hmm. say, well, I, I'm not holy. I'm, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Forget it. Mm -hmm. You are made holy oh. by the blood of Jesus. Receive it uh, by faith. You are made holy by the blood of Jesus, by the Spirit of of God. But there are some interesting scriptures. Uh, one says, uh, like uh, 2 Corinthians 7, uh, 1, that we can perfect holiness. So, mm -hmm. so uh, okay, so Hallelujah. Let's, let's activate the blood in our life by faith, mm -hmm. and then we can even perfect holiness. And, and then there's another verse, uh, Hebrews 12, 14, that says uh, we can pursue holiness Ooh, in everything Dang. and that's what i'm i'm focusing on here i want you to pursue holiness in everything uh don't oh, think about all oh, uh, if, if i go to a church service and then, then that's a sacred place mm -hmm. when you you look at a congregation and uh, uh, a building um, a church building you go in there and they may have this big uh, uh area and they call it a sanctuary uh, and, and, they, and that means holy place. But let me tell you, that's not a holy place. And, and they may put a sign on it and say, don't eat here, I don't <laughs> eat food in the sanctuary, but that doesn't make it a holy place. It's the blood of Jesus. Yes, it's the blood of Jesus and the spirit of God and, and, and God himself who's making us oh, holy and yeah. he's making us holy. And we are to pursue holiness and we are to perfect holiness by which we will see God. Hallelujah. And, and see, religion wants to drive a wedge between you and God and then fill, and then fill that wedge with themselves. And I want to give you some examples. Uh, I've heard pastors say, well, now, if we're at church, you need to call me Reverend, Reverend Bob, or Reverend Bill. You need to call me Reverend. But now, if I'm, you see me at a movie, movie theater, theater. At a movie theater, you can just call, call me, me Bob. Bob. <laughs> well, you, you know, that's because they're trying to put this uh, distinction between what is sacred, sac sacred and secular. And, and also, here's something else I've seen that uh, a woman has a friend in a hospital, and, and the woman in the hospital, the friend in the hospital is sick, a and the woman wants to go up and pray for her, uh, pray for her uh, friend, a sick friend in the hospital, but she has to go ask her pastor if she can do it 
because he's over sacred things and praying for a sick person he, can, he considers to be sacred but you know she could go buy groceries she didn't have to have approval from the from the uh, pastor to uh, uh, buy groceries because he thought well that's just sa secular and but if it's a sacred it's in my realm and i'm pastor uh, but but what we're to do we're to pursue holiness in every every area of life mm. glory mm. to god mm. Mm. Hey, it's important Th this message is mm. important we need to understand that god has sanctified you the uh, hallelujah, very hallelujah. God of peace, peace sanctifies your spirit, spirit soul, soul and, and body. body you're the one who's sanctified by the blood of jesus by the spirit of god and, and you pursue holiness in every area of life and don't don't let people try to get you into a box and, and think, oh, you don't have any uh, say-so in the sacred area. You just have a say-so in the secular area of your life. But when you come into uh, uh, something sacred, the, then the pastor has to give you an okay and put a stamp of approval on you. But when you go about uh, establishing the kingdom in all areas of your life. And that's the reason so many people sit around because they're waiting on approval from a pastor to go and do something and don't realize that they are holy and that they are functioning in the kingdom. They need to be functioning in the kingdom and that kingdom is 24 seven. seven. Don't, don't think that, oh, uh, it's only 11 o'clock till 12 o'clock on Sunday morning is the only time that's a holy time, a sacred time. No, all time, all the day long from top of the morning to the end of the night. And see, kingdom is eternal. So it really has no time limits on it. It is 24 seven. And listen to what Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 10 verses 7 and 8 he said as you go proclaim the kingdom preach the kingdom is it at tell them oh, the as, you go. as you. you go where where are you going well going to the theater going to the grocery store as you go wherever you're going to uh, let them know about the kingdom let them know the kingdom is here and heal the sick and cleanse and the, the lepers, lepers. And, and raise the dead and cast out devils as you, you go. go. That's Hallelujah. just an incredible statement. And it does, he never <laughs> said, oh, oh you've got to go get the, your approval from the pastor to do something sacred. See, that's where people get mixed up in their mind. And, and they think, well, I've just got to wait till somebody approves me to go out and do something sacred mm -hmm. when everything should be sacred and, and you shouldn't let people put you in a box and say oh if, if you do this over here you've got to have my approval to do it don't fall for that don't fall for that this is an important message tonight yes and is. i want you yes, to understand is. there that you should not put a line between sacred and secular, but you should pursue holiness, holiness. in everything you do. And it's a 24 seven operation. <laughs> it's the kingdom of kingdom culture. Yes. It's 24 seven, but in reality, there is no time limit. It's eternal. It's eternal. The third thing I want to say, I hope you write this down. In the kingdom, ministry is a lifestyle. It's not a set of activities. Uh, when we get up in the morning, we're, we're ministering. When we get, go to bed at night, we're mm -hmm. all day long through the, through the night. Uh, people yeah, yeah. may contact us about uh, situations and, and we can minister to them. So don't think. That, that ministry is this activity of programs and buildings. No, ministry is a lifestyle in the kingdom. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're of the kingdom culture. We're and ambassadors. ministry is a lifestyle. Ministry is a lifestyle. And I want to give you some examples of Sherry and I, how we have approached 
life and how we've approached ministry. For many years, we've been full-time in the ministry, but at the same time, we've had um, jobs, we've had careers, we've had uh, businesses, and we've approached businesses and professional careers as kingdom ministry. Glory to God. Amen. And, and, and I want to just talk about Sherry for a moment. She had her own business. She was a trainer, trainer of, the, of government leaders and business leaders and, and lots of different uh, people. And, and I have seen uh, her teach uh, these business leaders or government leaders uh, uh, eight hours uh, all day from early in the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon. And it, you think about you've got a classroom of 50 to 70 people, 50 to 70 people. And uh, you think, well, when five o'clock came uh, that they would leave. <laughs> but what happened uh, when Sherry taught them for eight hours and when five o'clock came, and I've seen this with my own eyes, they line up in single file and they want to go up to her and ask her for prayer. Uh, or ask her about, and these are business leaders, or these are government leaders, uh, because well, why did she do, why, why did that happen? Because they saw the anointing upon her, and, and even though it was in a business setting, or in a government setting, uh, she brought forth enough anointing, and brought forth the principles of the kingdom, enough that people would recognize that the the spirit of God is upon her and in her, flowing out of her, and they would want to come up there and, and ask for prayer when it was over with. And they would get in a line, 50 to 70 people, a single file, and just wait patiently. And the first one would ask, uh, tell her about some situation and ask for prayer, and she would pray, and she'd prophesy, and she would uh, minister to them, and then the next, and they'd just wait patiently and the reason I saw it was because I would come in there to get her and get her materials and and take uh take it out to the car and and they would just be wanting prayer and then that's the way she ministered for years and years and even in the for 40 years and even in the classroom when she was teaching in classroom and she'd minister to the young uh, female students and minister to them about not uh, committing a, uh, abortions uh not mm. having abortions uh, when they were uh, pregnant, a and uh, then there would be times that they, they would call her and say, uh, Mrs. Yeah. White, I I've, I've had a child, and I, I was going to have an abortion, and, and, and you counseled me, and I, and I have a child now, and maybe I have two or three children, and, and she's gotten these calls, or she's been around town mm -hmm. and seen uh, some of her former students, and when they were thinking about the getting an, uh, an abortion, and she'd counsel them, uh, not to get an abortion. So we, Sherry and I have for years pursued full-time ministry, even though we've had jobs and we've had careers and we've had businesses and we've done things. And I'll just talk about me for a minute. Uh, I, I was a teacher and a researcher at the university, but God told me to be an administrator. He gave me a purpose and an assignment and I did. I became an, uh, an administrator uh, not it wasn't my choice it was it, this is what he said he won't that I will be an administrator so I became an administrator I was fulfilling kingdom uh, there at the university and, and the reason he wanted me in that position he wanted me to bring righteousness to it because he was concerned about the students we had hundreds and hundreds of students and, and he wanted righteousness in that department I mean I fired people I hired people I hired some really good teachers I really good staff members. I hired a lot of people and, and because to establish righteousness and, and during that time, I mean, we brought a lot of people into our house and had Bible studies mm -hmm, with students mm -hmm. from all around the world. We brought them here into our, into our home and, and, and ministered to them. We have been full time in the ministry. And I know there's a lot of young people uh, that are just, uh, they can't wait to get behind a pulpit. Uh, but let me tell you, <laughs> maybe a, getting behind a pulpit is not what God is calling you to do. Hallelujah. Now, if that's your calling, fine, go for it. But but you can be in the full-time ministry before you get behind a pulpit. Let me tell you, full-time ministry in the kingdom, 
ministry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it, it's going on. It's a lifestyle. Style. And the lifestyle is your attitudes and your behavior. And I've seen so many people that, that are out work, working and want, wanting to do this or that, but that they just want to get behind a pulpit and then they don't have to work anymore, which is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. Well, ministry is all the time. It's a 24-7. As a matter of fact, it's an eternal thing. Get it, get it in your mind today uh, that this is what you're going to be in, doing in eternity. You're, you've got things and assignments to do in eternity. Hallelujah. Now let's go ahead and start them. Now, let's don't wait mm. until we have to have somebody's approval uh, to get behind a pulpit so we don't have to work anymore. Sherry and I have worked mm. for years and years, and we are thankful we never had to depend on people uh, to pay our house uh, payment, or to pay our car payment, because God has provided for us. Jehovah Jireh is the one who has provided for us. Amen. Now, I Amen. Three, three, glory to God, key, keys to kingdom culture, that the environment for the new creation is the kingdom. Second, pursue holiness. In the kingdom, pursue mm -hmm. holiness in everything. Mm -hmm. Number three, in the kingdom, ministry is a lifestyle. It's not a set of activities. And now I'm getting to number four. And this is my fourth and final point. It's a pretty short message. pretty, uh, <laughs> But it's a significant <laughs> message. And the fourth point is that relationships are paramount yeah. in the kingdom. Now, paramount is not a word that I use, but it's a word God said for me to use. He said paramount. That means it's pretty important. It means it's, it dominates things. And, and, and what kind of relationships? Well, of course, you've got the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but also people. And, and so it's a, a relationships with, uh, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but your relationships out here as well. The, those are really important. See, the first institution God ordained in the Garden of Eden was based on relationships. Yes, I mean. It brought forth marriage, but that's just a, mm. a form of a relationship. So relationships are very important mm. in the kingdom. Now let's think about a few verses here. And uh, Philippians 1.7 uh, says that Paul's writing to the Philippians and he says we're partners in grace, partners in grace. And so mm -hmm. these are the kinds of relationships we're talking about here. What God told us a number of years ago, and, and, and the reason and rationale for this whole series anyway, is to tell you things that we have learned uh, over the years by the Holy Spirit and by, by the things that we have observed and how things, how God has fit things together. And, and this is not just out of book learning, but this is out of our heart. What, what we have learned, what we've experienced over the years. That's the reason and the motivation for this series and, and, and relationships. See, he said, uh, the Holy Spirit said to us years ago that you cannot grow if you're not joined to people. The only place you can grow is where you have the joints. And, and the joints that he's talking about uh, I, we call them grace joints because like Paul wrote to the Philippians, mm -hmm. he said, we're partners in grace. He said, I, I extend grace to you. You extend grace to me. So you need relationships that are built on grace, that you give grace, you speak grace, grace, you minister grace one to another in those relationships. That's the only place. And we'll see this in scriptures. That's the only place you can grow. Now you, you don't grow in a congregation of 5,000 uh, and, and you come in late and you just sneak in and, and sit, and on, sit the on the back row. row and then you're first one out, you, you don't grow that way. You, you might think, well, I'm doing my Christian duty, but let me tell you, you're not growing that way. You, you, grow, you grow in the where grace joined. joint where God has joined, joined you. you. That's real important mm. for you to know where God joins you. There are going to be some people that will pour into your life, and there will be some people you pour into their life. And then there will be some people uh, more at your level, and you pour into each other's lives. And, and so grace joints are, are very important. 
So I started here with Philippians 1.7. Uh, we'll move to Ephesians 4.16. And it talks about that we each supply, that the joints mm. that we're joined together and we supply one, one another. One what is another. it that we're, that we're supplying to one another? It's grace and it's life. And this is the, and this is also in Colossians 2.19. And this is where we grow in love. Now, it, it's like, let's say you are a rock and you have little points on, on the rock. And then you, you get into a string and then all oh, you have other rocks, yeah. and they all have little points on them, yeah, and, and yeah. those points will just cut people. And uh, if you reach down and get them and try, yeah, they just cut you in the hand because they've all got little points on them. And, but if you stay in that uh, Holy Ghost stream long enough, then those rocks—it's the rocks that that are uh, hitting mm -hmm. each other, knocking off those little points, and they get smooth. And then, and then David could go out there and. Pick up five, five little smooth stones, stones in, in the in the Holy Ghost brook, and he could put them in his uh, in his <laughs> little uh, bag, bag and, and then he could go out, and it didn't matter which one he used, he could pull out any one of those five stones and kill Goliath, uh, because they would go straight, because they had been in the Holy they Ghost. no jagged points on them. The Holy Ghost brook long enough to knock off all those little points and, and jagged edges that would otherwise cause it to veer off and go to go the wrong direction but see a smooth stone is going to go straight well that's the way god uh, intends for all of us to be around people and so we're knocking the jagged edges off and we're getting smooth and and uh, well we might cry out and, and uh, have have some temper here temper there and those things begin to uh, we begin to hit each other and knock out those little those little points on in in, uh, in our lives and and we get smooth over time and, and that's where we grow in love see we don't grow in love uh by going into a cave you you, you grow in yeah, love yeah. by being around people and, and people not with caving and, and uh, it <laughs> might be people that are not that uh lovely to be around uh, but they're going to pull out the uh, the little stones and the little sharp edges in your life and the Holy Spirit, you know, once they get uh, manifested and uh, then, then the Holy Spirit can work with you and say, well, you shouldn't have done that. Or let, let's go mm -hmm, ahead and mm -hmm. repent about that. And then you begin to get those jagged edges uh, uh, broken off of you. But you don't do that by yourself. You don't do it, like Sherry said, by caving. Uh, you've got to spend some time with people. And so being joined to people, that's where you grow in love. Mm -hmm. And then in Colossians 2.19, it, it talks about the same, that it's the life, and, and Sherry's going to read this verse out of, the, uh, out of the Passion Translation, but it talks about this is where life is. Life is in the joints. A Hallelujah. And, then, Hallelujah. and so I want you to listen for these words here in uh, Colossians 2.19 in the Passion, that it's life's going to come from Jesus Christ. It's going to come through the joints. Uh, and so we share life with one another. We share grace with one another. And then it's by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit that we grow. Uh, and, and I know that in uh, uh, congregations, uh, they have a thousand different uh, plans for church growth, but God only has one for growth. And that's here in Colossians 2, uh, 19. I last year to read this verse from the Passion. We receive directly from Christ and his life supplies vitality into every part of his body through the joining ligaments, connecting us all as one. He is the divine head who guides his body and causes it to grow by the supernatural power of God. See, in the kingdom, we grow by one thing, and that is by the life from Christ that goes through uh, the joints. And so you have to know where your divine joints are, where you've been joined in the body of Christ, and, and then that's where you get life. Now, now you can't just say, well, okay, I, I'm, I'm joined with you, and then I never see you again. Uh, see, it, you, have to, you have to build relationships. That that's relationships right. Right. are paramount in the kingdom. They're, they're really important. And then the Holy Spirit 
the power of the Holy Spirit, that's going to cause us to grow when we're connected, when we've got uh, connections, we have relationships with people, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that's where we grow. We don't grow uh, by some uh, natural program and and uh, a lot of church congregations going have, through a formula have some kind of a formula about growth and 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 they have uh, some kind of a program and they say this is the what we're going to do for church growth well let me tell you god only has one plan and that's by the life the, that flows from through christ the church, through the joints yeah. and the power of god the power of the holy spirit puts it all together and makes it work and we all grow up and we grow into Christ, into the image of Christ. Because I tell you, the body has to look like the head. The head is oh, not, hallelujah, not going to be hallelujah. Uh, huge, the head, Christ. Uh, and the body is some kind of a deformed mm, thing that doesn't fit mm, together mm, fussing mm. and fighting. It's all got to come together. And, and you do it at the joints where you're joined by the power of the Holy Spirit and guided by the Holy Spirit about who mm. you've been joined mm. with. Don't think that you can just go and join some uh, 5,000 congregation or 50 congregation or whatever that you can join. You can choose where you want to join. And if they're if you're not happy there, then you can go someplace else. That's not kingdom. Kingdom, it's not about membership in a congregation. Oh, kingdom is hallelujah. about relationships. Oh. Relationships are paramount in hallelujah. the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we want life to flow out of each one of you. And, and I know that you're doing many great things for for the lord and and so we just want uh, you to uh to think on these things to consider these things that uh brother fred brought to us tonight and the relationships are so very he said they were important but they're they're critical in your growth in the kingdom and your fulfillment of your destiny i'm not an island to myself and if I say I have a relationship, let's say with Brother Fred, and I never see him, I never talk to him, I never uh, um, communicate with him, what kind of relationship is that? Uh, it's it's not it's not a grace it's not a grace joint uh, because a grace joint uh, there's there's communication there's trust and and I can I can go into a lot of other uh, things that the Lord has showed us. 